Good morning, beloved ones. Turn to someone and tell them, I am the radiant light of God. I am the radiant light of God, yes. I'm the radiant expression of God, yeah. I am the radiant light of God. I am the radiant expression of God. You gotta claim that which you desire, right? You've got to claim that which you know to be the truth. You speak it into existence. Well, this morning we're gonna continue with our series that we've been working with titled Back to Basics. Because from time to time, we all need to be reminded of the basics. And so we've been working with those spiritual principles and concepts and teachings that provide us with a strong foundation, a strong foundation for success, a strong foundation that will enable us to live the life that we have been called to live and that we want to live. So our subtitle for this morning's message is Speak Up or Name It and Claim It. <laughs> Speak Up or Name It and Claim It. Because one of the first things that we were given by God, one of the first things that we were gifted with by God is the power and the ability to name a thing. And this notion comes from Genesis, as God was working with the Adam man in the creation of that human aspect of the Adam consciousness. And God was speaking to Adam. And this is what we find in Genesis chapter 2, verse 17. And it reads this, well, 17 through 19. Out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every bird of the air and brought them to Adam to see what he would call them. And whatever Adam called each living creature, that was its name. Whatever Adam called each living creature, that was its name. So another version says, and whatsoever Adam called every creature, that was the name thereof. And similarly, it is so with us as well. Because whatever is placed or brought before us, whatever situation, whatever circumstance shows up in our lives before us, we get to name it as well. We get to define it and call it as well. And we name it according to our perceptions of it. We, we, we name it according to our consciousness. And you remember last week we were talking about a con our consciousness. It's all the thoughts and the feelings and the attitudes and the experiences and, and what we've named things previously. All that forms our consciousness, our spirit, mind, and soul consciousness. And so uh, the, 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 the ability to name something is made up of our, our perceptions, our consciousness, and our general outlook. And so, you know, what we name it becomes our experience of it. That's a key point I want us to get. Whatever we name becomes our experience because to name something is to define it. And when you name your experiences bad or horrible or terrible, I was just terrible, that was just horrible, or any other negative adjective, then those become your experience. Because the truth of the matter is, and you ought to know this, is that your experience or experience in general is a personal thing. It's a personal thing. It is really how you define it, how you see it, how you name it. And it's not necessarily how it is, but it's how you see it to be, right? Because so often we think, well, because I see it this way, this must be everybody's experience. And then we're shocked when people are not seeing it the way we see it, 
or not defining it, naming it the way we name it. So we think, well, okay, you know, my reality must be everybody's reality. No, it's your reality. <laughs> and, and, and they have their reality based on their perceptions and how they've named things and how they've lived their lives and what, what makes up their consciousness and their point of view. So experience is very personal. You get to own it, it's yours. You get to name it. And if you want to name it bad and terrible and horrible, that's fine. That will be your reality. But here is a mystical, a metaphysical, a magical, a miracle point of view that you can have. Because you can indeed change or transform your inner experience of anything by how you name it, how you see it, and how you claim it to be. There's something uh, uh, metaphysical, but there's something mystical in the naming of a thing. So you can actually transform your experience, because your experience is just yours. You can transform it by how you want to name it and claim it to be. Which is why we encourage you in New Thought and in Truth to name it all what? Name it good. Name your in inner experience good. And don't worry about the outer experience. You say, well, how can this, look what it looks like. Forget what it looks like out there. You name it good. You count it good. As Paul would say, you count it all joy. But I'm saying count it all good and name it all good because good is another name for God. Good is another name for God because we say in truth that the nature of God is absolute what? Good. It's absolute good. And so what happens is when you name your inner experience as good, regardless of what others might be telling you, what the world might be saying, what's showing up in the outer realm, the realm of appearances, and Jesus told us about that, right? Not to judge by appearances, but judge by righteous judgment, right use of your own sense of being able to discern what is good and right and true for you. And so when you can name this experience, your inner experience as good, you are actually calling forth the power of God. You're calling forth the healing and transformative power of God to express and bring forth its nature, its goodness into your experience. So that's powerful. Now, we, now that we know that the nature of God is absolute good, because the name of something means its nature, right? So the nature of God is absolute good. And it caused me to think, well, what is the name of God? Because if the name means nature, then what's, what is the name of God? If good is another name for God, that's wonderful. But there's some other names of God, and there's one that's even more powerful than the notion of God as being good. And I'm sure all of you metaphysicians, all of you biblical scholars out there know <laughs> that the name of God that was given to Moses was what? I am. I am. When Moses asked God, well, what should I tell the people of Israel is your name, God said, I am that I am. Then he said, tell the people of Israel, I am sent me unto you. I am sent me unto you. That is so powerful because what that says is that every time we say I am, I am this or I am that, you are invoking the name of God. You are calling forth the, the being and the qualities of the divine into your being and into your life and into your affairs. Which is why you should never attach your I am statement to anything that is less than good. Never attach it. Because you see, those words, those words, the I am, are powerful. They are the words that you would use to claim what you desire, 
to call forth the presence and power of God, the good, to manifest in your life. I am. I am that, I am that, I am that, I am. So for example, you, if you're not feeling well, right? And I do this too, but if you're not feeling well, do not say, I am sick. First of all, we're gonna get here a little bit later. Your I am can't be sick. Your I am is the spiritual nature of God in you, and if God can be sick, then we're gonna be in trouble. So you don't say, I am sick. You might say something like, I am in need of healing. I am healing. When someone tells you, ask you how you're doing, we love to give the sad, sad story. I'm included in that. Oh, I'm sick, child, I got a headache, I got this. Right? Uh-uh. I am healing. I am. When you say I am in need of healing, you are calling forth the nature of God as divine health. You get to bring it forth. Then we wonder why, well, why aren't like, my prayers aren't working? I'm not getting better. You didn't call it forth. You didn't call it right. You didn't pray it right. Right? You pray to miss. <laughs> or if you have a financial need, you don't be saying, oh, child, I'm broke. <laughs> no. <laughs> right? How many of you, we've said that, right? Oh, I am broke. Uh-uh. I am desiring more prosperity in my life, right? I'm open to being more prosperous. I am open to my blessings, more blessings coming into my, into my situation. I am open for the healing of my financial resources. Whatever it is. See, we're not conditioned to speak in the affirmative. We have been conditioned to speak in the negative, in the state of lack of what we don't have and what we're not experiencing. God didn't give you the power of your I am to attach it to anything negative or limited. That's a gift that you were given. All right? So you should use your I am statements should be used with conscious forethought to bring forth the nature and the name of God. Because those two words are, are part of your creative and spiritual arsenal. They're part of your arsenal. They carry with them great power and great energy. They carry with them the power to manifest. It's very, very powerful. In Proverbs, Proverbs 18, 18 to 21, it says this. As soon as I find it in my notes, <laughs> it says this. Wait, I know I have it in here someplace because I wrote it this morning. Well, I actually wrote it last night. So Proverbs, probably, I guess I'm just going to have to read it. Okay, here it says. I have it written down, but I'll read it. I guess the script, Bible wants, uh, Spirit wants me to read it from the Scriptures. So I will read it, Proverbs. And this is what it says in Proverbs. Proverbs 18 Verse 21, life and death are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. I'm going to say that again. Life and death, or death and life, are in the power of the tongue, right? And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Meaning, friends, that we speak into existence, that whatever we speak into existence shall either bring something to life or it will eliminate it, right? It'll bring it will to life or it'll eliminate. And it says, and we shall eat of its fruit, meaning it shall become our experience. When you ingest it, when you speak it, that's going to be your experience. So if we're going to get back to basics, friends, then we're going to have to remember not only the power of the spoken word, but the power of our words. Because our words carry life and substance and energy and intelligence. They are creative. They are formative. They are the gift from God. And how we use them truly, truly have a, an effect on our life and an effect on our life affairs. It says in Matthew 12 verse 37, for by your words you shall be justified, and by your words you shall be condemned. Right? The power 
of life and death are in the tongue. It's very important, this power of the spoken word, sometimes we just use it willy-nilly and we overlook it. This is some powerful stuff here. Life and death are contained within it. Your justification, your condemnation are contained within how you speak your words. Because what happens is they can, your words can build something up or they can tear something down. And we've all been built up by people's words and we've been torn down by it people's words, right? It's very, very important. You can draw to you your heart's desires by the words you speak, or you can also draw upon you your fears by the words you speak, which is why we always encourage you to make good, solid use of the spiritual tools of affirmations and denials. Because those, those two words, affirmations and denial, they carry your yay, yay, and they carry your what? Nay, nay. They carry your yay, yay power and your yay, nay, nay power of the spoken word. Because we affirm through our yay and we deny through our nay. In other words, we use the power of our yes, right? To bring that which we desire into our life and we can also use the power of our no to move out of our lives that which we do not want. Everybody say, yay, yay. Yeah, yeah. Say, nay, nay. Yeah, yeah. Let me hear you say, yes. yes. And say, no. No. You see, that, this, is, this is powerful, friends. We really shouldn't be afraid to use the power of our yes and our no. Say yes to what you want and say no when you need to. See, sometimes think we have things confused, and again, we wonder why our prayers don't work, because we weaken them with our words. We say yes when we really mean no, and we say no when we really want to say yes. We're afraid to use that power. It's a gift you were given. You can't send out mixed messages. When they say, do you want another piece of pie? <laughs> don't say no when you really want to say yes. Say yes. Because then you're just going to drive home and say, I should have had that pie. That pie was so good. I really want that pie. <laughs> yay, yay, or nay, nay. The Bible says, don't let your, your yay, yay, or your, don't let it be weak and lukewarm. You can't be lukewarm. It's a gift that we are given. And sometimes I, I have a challenge with my no. I don't want to say no to people. I don't want to hurt their feelings. And, but that never serves me well. I'm not being authentic to what I'm really feeling inside. There's a way to do it, lovingly and kindly, but be clear with what it is that you are feeling and desiring and speaking. Use your yes, use your no. Yay, yay, nay, nay. But don't be lukewarm with it. Affirmations and denials are powerful. They are statements of truth that we use to condition and to change our consciousness. If you're holding a limited consciousness and you want to be healed and free from it, you can use affirmations and denials to get your, 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 your consciousness right. And so since we're working with the basics, I thought it would be good to review and to start out with what Emily Cady calls the four great affirmations. We'll look at denials next week, but for this week, the four great affirmations. And this is an Emily Cady, is a writer of a book called Lessons in Truth. It's what we call Unity's Primer. It's one of the first books we encourage people to read if you're just starting on the spiritual journey of truth and understanding. So the first great affirmation is this, and I'll read it, and I don't know if they're putting that up yet. Oh, they have it up, all right. Go ahead, Tracy, thank you. I called at 6.30 in the morning, I text her, I need this up. So, um, the first one says, God is life, love, intelligence, substance, omnipotence, omniscience, omnipresence. God is life, love, intelligence, substance, omnipotence, omniscience, Omnipresence, that's powerful, affirm that. God is life, love, intelligence, substance, omnipotence, omniscience, omnipresence. That's powerful because if you're going to start off with an uh, affirmation of power, you might as well start off with one that affirms the truth about God, right? 
We always want to affirm the truth about God because that's going to be our foundation. Because if you can have this understanding and you can have that knowledge and that wisdom and that faith and that belief of this affirmation as a foundational point for you, then you can begin to relax and rely upon it as being true. Because understanding and affirming the nature of God offers us tremendous power for anything that we might have to face in life. If you can affirm God is life, that includes our life. God is life, all life. My, I'm included in that life of God, that life energy. God is life. And if you can, you can affirm or include God is love, that that loving energy and nurturing energy of the divine of God also rests within my being. If you can also affirm that God is uh, substance or intelligence, the wisdom, that means I have the wisdom of God. I have the knowledge I need when I need it. I know what to do and when to do it and how to do it because the spirit of God as intelligence is in me. I have that nature of, 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 of substance, the substance of God. Of God is substance. Substance is that which stands behind everything. Substance. And that which stands behind everything is nothing but God. Right? As we say, omniscient, right? Omnipotent and omnipresent. The energy, life, substance, intelligence, wisdom of God is everywhere present, all powerful, all knowing, in my life and in my affairs. Now that's something, that's an affirmation that we can hold on to because when you can speak this truth, when you speak this truth without doubt, and we talked about the power, right, of doubt in our last lessons, when you can speak it without doubt, then you will begin to bring forth the goodness of God and all the attributes of God into your life and affair. God is life, love, intelligence, substance, um, omnipotence, omniscience, and omnipresent. The second great affirmation is this. I am a child or manifestation of God. And every moment, his life, love, wisdom, power flow into and through me. I am one with God, and I am governed by his law. Let's affirm that. I am a child or manifestation of God, and every moment, his life, love, wisdom, power flow into and through me. I am one with God and am governed by his law. Wow. That takes that first affirmation and, and brings it deeper. It just takes it deeper because it now connects the power and the attributes of God to us. We first define God, now it's connecting those attributes to us. And it sees those attributes as flowing into and through us. So affirming that cannot help but build our consciousness. It can't help but build our awareness of who we truly are as a child of God. Which then leads us to the third great affirmation. And the third great affirmation is this. I am spirit, perfect, holy, harmonious. Nothing can hurt me or make me sick or afraid. For spirit is God and God cannot be sick or hurt or afraid. I manifest my real self through this body now. Let's affirm that. I am spirit, perfect, holy, harmonious. Nothing can hurt me or make me sick or afraid. For spirit is God, and God cannot be sick or hurt or afraid. I manifest my real self through this body now. That's a powerful statement. Powerful because it brings us to the spiritual component and the truth. The body may feel what? Pain. But Jesus said you can destroy the body, but you can't destroy what? The soul. The soul is where I am. In my I am nature, in my spiritual nature. That can't be destroyed. So that's what we are affirming, the spiritual components of life. 
That's an absolute powerful affirmation because it's speaking directly to our spiritual nature as spiritual beings. And when we can really get this into our psyche, we will not be fearful. There may be 10,000 things that fall at your right side and fall at your left side, but it won't come near to you if you have the right consciousness. If you get this into your, into your psyche, you will not allow those thoughts of illness, those thoughts of pain, those thoughts of whatever to enter into your consciousness because you will rightfully claim your birthright as a child or an expression of God. You claim it. You've got to claim it, that which you seek and you desire. And when you do that, God will manifest the good you seek. Which brings us to the fourth and final great affirmation, which is this. God works in me to will and to do whatever he wishes me to do, and he cannot fail. Isn't that powerful? Ooh, let's affirm that one. God works in me to will and to do whatever he wishes me to do, and he cannot fail. That's the, that last statement right there sums it all up. God cannot fail. Cannot fail. And when you begin to identify with the will of God for you, Right? When you identify with the will of God for you, you will also come to know that it is really God's desire that you have the goodness that is his nature. Right? God's will for you, as we say in truth, is absolute good. It's only good. God's will for you is not something negative or limited. It is for the goodness of God. God's desire is only for good for you. And so God works through you. You become the channel of God for God's good to move forth and for his purposes. You think you're here for one thing. God has you here for his purpose, right? For his divine will. And it works so much better when you work in cooperation with God's will. Because it's a lot less painful than you knocking your head up trying to do your thing. Because when you move with the will of God and through the will of God, your life takes on, ooh, such beauty and power. Never be afraid to follow the will of God. Because the truth is, is that he's going to accomplish his purpose regardless, right? His purpose for your life will be accomplished. It will be done, for God does not fail. So if he's marked something and ordained something for you, don't worry about what's yours is yours. And there isn't a person or a thing that can take your good from you. It's yours. But you got to follow the will, right? Follow that will of God. So, beloved ones, this is our back-to-basic lesson, is that we must remember to speak truth, to speak words of affirming life, and when you do, you begin to watch your own life outpicture what you speak. You can call a thing that is not as though it were, and it will be so for you. So, let your yay-yay be yay-yay. Let your nay, nay be nay, nay. Let your yes be yes. Let your no be no. Speak only that which you truly want to manifest in your life. Use your I am statements wisely, friends, and manifest this power of the spoken word, this gift that has been given us as a blessing for us to create, co-create our world according to our words. Christ said, my words, they are spirit and they are life. Speak those life-affirming words. And listen to yourself sometimes. Mm -hmm. Listen to what I have sometimes I have to say, ooh, did I just say that? Listen to yourself and to your words. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. And they 
will build your life. You can use your words to build your consciousness and to build your life. So, speak up, name it and claim it, and it shall be yours. Blessings. Blessings, namaste. Blessings. Blessings. And now... Thank you.